back with another review and this time I wanted to have a look at a very light saber. But before we get to that, some formalities to get out of the way first. So first of all, bought this piece with my own money. Paul Becker from Inmoto was not aware that there was going to be a review. He might have guessed it because this isn't the first piece I bought and reviewed from him, but it wasn't part of any promotional deal or anything. Secondly, general structure of the review will be the same as always, i.e. there will be my talking part in the beginning, going over the piece and what it is, ordering process, pros, cons, etc. Then there will be a picture with stats, so you can pause and look at those. And then there will be a number of more pictures, just to see from different perspectives, and some clips where you can see me using the piece, actually. As always, we'll put the timestamps down in the description, so should you want to jump around, feel free to do so. Now, one last thing, and that is a bit of a confession that I have to make. This is not the original grip of this saber here. This is a customized replacement one that I got recommended from uh, by Oliver from Miswedorn, and it was kindly printed for me by Marcus from Nispadon. And of course, trying it out, I had to change the original very bright blue sports grip uh, with this one here. And being the smart man I am, I put this very, very bright, easily spotable sports grip in a safe space where I would definitely find it again. Which of course now means I have absolutely no clue where it is. I have turned the space upside down. I, I can't find it anymore. So keep in mind that when I um, show the stats and when I speak about this now, I speak about this piece with this grip here. More about the grip later. Um, I'll also link the review by Oliver from Miss uh down in the description because if I remember correctly, he did take his measurements with the original configuration. So then you can look at that and compare. Does He also compares it with an original uh, practice saver that he has. So that's also nice. Okay, all of that out of the way. What do we actually have here? This is the Inmoto Old School Practice Saver M2. And the name might already clue you into the fact that there is an M1. This piece doesn't necessarily stand on its own. It's basically part of an ecosystem that Power um, has created, wants to expand, of uh, interchangeable parts that are compatible with each other that you can just, you know, swap out the way you want. And also not only compatible with each other, but also compatible with sports parts. So this blade here does have a sport tang. You can just go ahead and put a sports basket, for example, on it and use it like that, if you want. Generally, if you were to look at this and just mistake it on a first glance for a sports saber, I wouldn't blame you. My first impression from just looking at this was actually that I went just like, okay, I can I can see where Paul is going with this. Um, it does look interesting, but I don't think this will be for me. And then I kind of moved on. But after Oliver's review, I kind of got curious. So I went ahead and ordered it, um, just as per usual, went to Paul's website. It's a professional one, works great. By now he does actually have an indicator if things are in stock, which is a nice improvement. Uh, I think I paid by PayPal. I ordered uh, mid to late March, got it in early April, and I have been using it since then in class. Not as my main saber, but regularly in sparring for combinations and things like that. So by now I think I have quite a good impression of it. One of my first impressions from the optics was basically just like, mm, don't think this will be for me. When I picked it up, actually, it did feel more saber-like than I thought, uh, just by, by looking at it, really. Now, what I do mostly is Hutton, and Hutton's saber is light. Hutton is, I think, 1898 with cold steel, 
And while he does complain that the sailors that are used in Britain at the time are too heavy for his taste and he likes the lighter continental ones, they weren't quite as light and they were actually um, curved. So not quite this yet. Um, and I have used sports savers in the past just, you know, out of curiosity and uh, those just felt a bit too light for me really. This one is more substantial than that. So my first impression from just picking it up was really quite nice. Now, it is a light saver. This one weights in at, I think, 628 grams roundabout. And most of that is actually from the basket, which is also responsible for the rather close POB of about 4, 4.5 centimeters, because this one is steel and two millimeters. Arguably, that is just stronger than this blade would really need. But do keep in mind, this is part of an ecosystem. This is also meant to work, this part here, with other heavier blades. Now, the nice thing is, it also means it works nicely against other heavier blades and you don't uh, immediately have your basket crumble like after a car crash. So that's really good. Uh, other thing I like about the basket is it is 10.5 centimeters about wide. It is symmetrical. You can use it with both hands. So it's nice. It's big. It covers what it needs to cover, but it isn't overly big, which is great. You have about seven centimeters between grip and basket, so there is some good room, though arguably you do not need ultra heavy gloves with this one here. The grip is 14 centimeters, so good bit of room for your hand. The blade is 88 centimeters. Overall, this is 105 centimeters long, partly because of the pommel nut, really. And when it comes to the blade, if you go just by uh, taper really then you start off at 12 millimeters here and rather quickly move down to six millimeters and then you have a long stretch where it is just straight five millimeters all the way through distal taper you start at seven and then you move to four millimeters and then to two millimeters at the very end and then you have a thickened tip which i think is about five millimeters it is rather flexible especially in the last part uh, if you put it on a body weight scale and just press down on it a bit, it bends, it starts bending at about 1.7 kilogram of registered weight. So rather flexible, rather light, which is, of course, kind of the theme of the whole thing. Uh, generally, just from then after my first impression and from using it, as I said, in the beginning, I, I, I didn't quite think that I would really find a use for it. I was curious, but I didn't think I, I would end up bringing it along very much after training. But I actually have to say, I found scenarios where this one is actually nice to have. For one, it is, of course, again, light. Which is nice if you have people who are already a bit tired or who are very new to fencing, who don't quite have the fitness yet um, when they're still working on that. And a very light saber like this just means that people can train combinations a bit longer. And of course, longer practice is good. It's all about repetition, especially in the beginning. So that is nice. Also, just um, because it is so light, it is a bit different for training. This one is very nice if you really want to go for speed, if you really want to go for reflex training, if you really want to focus on a good parry, on a quick repost, that one is actually quite nice for that. Uh, it also makes for a nice cardio workout actually. Uh, I don't know how it is with you, but for me when fencing saber at some point usually my arm gets tired, that's when I switch to my other one. Um, with this one here I just get tired. <laughs> I just, my lung gives out at some point and I have to make, I just I have to do a bit of a pause and uh, catch my breath and then go at it again. In that regard, it's a bit similar to fall fencing where I also have that. So where I just, it's not my arm, it's, I, I just get a bit winded really. So that's also nice for just a different kind of training if you want to do that. Uh, another thing I really quite like about it is the price. 
to be honest, because this one in its original configuration cost me, I think, 98 euros, so under 100 euros, which is a nice price for a saber that might not be ideal necessarily for what you do, unless you do later HEMA saber, uh, rather late HEMA saber, then this one might actually be really ideal. But, you know, even for me, when I do, when I do Hutton, this one still works rather nicely and it is a really good price and if anything goes wrong with it you know just switch out the part so that is really quite nice overall um didn't think i would find a place for it but i'm quite happy i got it and i really quite like it so if you're looking for something very light that you can use with lower gear where you can maybe focus on your speed then you know do give the old school Practice Saber M2 from Inmoto a look. I can really quite recommend it. Now, Saber out of the way, as I mentioned, the grip. So, as I said, this was recommended to me by Oliver Janseps from Mispeldon. It was printed uh, for me by Markus from Mispeldon. And printed, it is 3D printed and it's hosted, I think, on Sing Thingiverse. I'll put a link down in the description. Um, by David from Mispeldon. And what this is, is basically a grip that you would normally find on the practice weapons of the fencing student societies that we have in Germany or the German-speaking parts of Europe. And it is really made for the thumb grip. The original sports saber grip that was on here is fine for what it is, but personally for my taste it's a bit too thin, but you know, that's the good part about all this. You can just replace it easily. This one is made to be compatible with sports tanks. So the same ones you can find on here. It would work on a sport blade as well. And it works perfectly with this one here. And because of the form, really, it's just so incredibly comfortable to use. So if you have a 3D printer or know someone who can uh, print stuff like that, just give it a try. It's really quite nice. We used to have those in plastic available for the fencing student societies, but they just took them out of their program. And yeah, that's then where people stepped up and made them available again for printing, which is great. So also give that a look. It's a great thing in its own right. Cheers.